Hello everybody, my name is Jemmy, and today I will be giving you a brief overview on collections in Python. Collections are like lists, tuples, dictionaries, etc. So I'm going to be doing that in Jupyter Notebook. The way to open Jupyter Notebook is if you're in Windows, type in CMD in your command prompt, click enter, then just type in Jupyter Notebook. Okay, and it should open in your browser. Uh, just wait a few seconds. Okay, and there we go. So now once it opens uh, What you want to do is you want to click on new Python 3 IPY kernel, but since I already have it I will just um, open it from my uh, Jupyter notebook uh, By the way, the link to download this notebook is in the description if you want to go check it out you can um, But just download it and then work with me through collab or Jupyter notebook uh, anything would do so now let's uh, get into the video. So let's look at lists first since list is one of the best ways to store data in Python and is one of the most used ways either um, too. Um, so uh, let's look at how to create a list. By the way, a list is mutable which means that you can change it throughout the coding instead uh, of like not being able to change it. You can like add stuff to it. You can delete stuff from it. Uh, but yeah, let's look at how to create it. So right here is a list name, Pokedex, uh, and in Pokedex, there is Pikachu, Eevee, Ditto, and Magikarp. And let me show you the way to create one. So this is a list. Now you're declaring Pokedex as an empty list. So to create a list, you need two brackets, one to uh, the right bracket and the left bracket. Once you did that, anything you put in into this list, uh, such as numbers, integers, strings, and uh, another list I can you can also put a list inside of a list uh, anything in here that is separate by a comma is a part of the list so now we have three objects eight an integer SDF a string and another empty list so you can put anything inside of here but I'm going to create a list of strings so I'm going to put in my Pokemon's Pikachu Eevee Ditto and Magikarp all of them are strings so once we did this we need to know a bit of information just like yesterday, how I was saying stuff about indexing and slicing, lists index start from zero. So Pikachu is zero, Eevee is one, Ditto is two, and Magikarp is three. And just to remember this so you don't get confused, like Pikachu is one, and then you put in one and it's actually Eevee. So don't get confused, it starts from zero. So now let's just print out the whole list. So if we were to print out the whole list, it would look somewhat like this. Pikachu, Eevee, Ditto, Magikarp with the brackets and the... Uh, the quotations but however we if we want just a specific one um, or a specific Pokemon we can uh, type it type in their index and we will get it so let's pretend we want ditto ditto is index 2 so if we're put in 2 there we go just the plain text ditto and if we want like Pikachu and Eevee then we would put in 1 through 3 like this and now we need to know something um, Three, you might say, hey, isn't three all the way to uh, Magikarp? Well, yes it is. But the reason we want to do this is because all, every time you want to slice something, you need to have one above the limit. So if we want ditto and ditto is two, we need to put it to three. However, because if we put it to two, then it'll just print out Eevee. And uh, this doesn't go, this doesn't apply to starting, however. The start just goes with the starting Pokemon. So Eevee is index 1, so we put index 1 here. If we put index 0, then it will be Pikachu to Ditto. But we don't want that. So you want 1, 2, 3. Like so. Um, and anyways, that is the basics of a list. Let's move on to the list structure. So as I said earlier, in the side of a list, there can be another list. Um, and we can also access this list. So what we need to do is first, uh, let's look at the main list. So this big one, which is called Pokedex. So this big list right here contains Pikachu, Eevee, Ditto, Magikarp, and one smaller list. Uh, and now let's look at how we can access a smaller list. If we count the index, we can know what uh, index this is, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is index 4 right here. And if we were to do print Pokedex index 4, then it would print out the whole list or the smaller list. And if we want to access one of these individual numbers, we can also do that. So if we want pretend number 20, then we can do Pokedex 4. And then after that, we have another bracket, or yeah, another bracket 1. 
So it'll go to bracket four and then it'll go into bracket, uh, no, sorry, it'll go to index four of Pokedex and it'll go into index one of the smaller list. So now we can access the number 15. I'm so sorry, um, I got confused myself. So remember when I said the index starts from zero? Well, we need to put zero in there. And now we get 20, so so sorry. Um, I got confused myself there. But yeah, we can access smaller lists throughout the big list. And if we were to have another list inside of this list, I mean, you can go on forever, but we're not gonna do that. And the more list you have, and if you wanna access the smaller ones, you can just add, print, add brackets through your printing and it will go into each list individually. And now let's look at lists with functions and if statements. So this is basically what we can implement or apply to our everyday life. And I'll show you an example right here. Let me drink some water. Um, but yeah, this is a way to implement our list. Uh, I made this by myself. So uh, yeah, so we have our Pokedex here with Pikachu, Eevee, Ditto, Magikarp, and the smaller list. And also we have uh, uh, input variable here, which is called Pokemon, and the input is enter. Oops, sorry. Enter there. Enter the poke. What? Enter the in your Pokemon's name. I think I kind of messed something up. Um, enter your Pokemon. Enter your Pokemon's name or the Pokemon's name. Okay, enter the Pokemon's name, and then basically it will let them type it in. And once we do that, we will go into, well, we'll, well, we'll create this uh, function right here, which is called PokePrint. And in PokePrint, there is a parameter called index. And we're going to be using index as uh, the way to access our uh, our little um, individual strings. So Pokedex index, which is one through four, uh, go into, or no, one, two, th one, zero to three. And then it'll go into that Pokemon is that is a Pokemon that has Pokedex 4, which is our smaller list, index, which goes into that smaller list's index, attack power. I know it might look confusing right now, but throughout the, when I run it, it will probably be more, uh, less confusing, so stick around. Um, and also after that, once we made the function, we will go in here and we will go into a if statement. So we have if Pokemon equals to Pikachu, which is, by the way, the Pokemon is the text that they inserted. If it goes to Pikachu, Pokeprint zero. So now we're gonna call up the function and um, make it to zero, the parameter index equals to zero, and a lift, which is else if, uh, which is used between if and else. Um, if Pokemon equals equals to Eevee, Pokeprint one, and so on until Magikarp. And after that, we put an else, and in the else, we put print your Pokemon is not currently inside of the database to let them know that it's not there yet. So uh, yeah. So if we were to try this out, and let's pretend we type in something random, uh, or something not in the, not in the data set like Moltres, then it goes your Pokemon is not currently inside of the database. However, if you were to type in something that was inside the database, like Eevee, Eevee, like so, and here is the string that they will pop up. Eevee is a Pokemon that has 15 attack power. As I said earlier, this doesn't really make sense, but this makes a lot more sense because. You know we can read it easier but yeah this is how you can implement it uh, we can do other Pokemon's too that we have like Magikarp and there we go but yeah as I said earlier you can do many things with lists uh, a lot of good things and this is just an example this is of course really small scale but you can enlarge it to be a, a really large scale project that you can make and list will be a part of them I promise you will lose you will use lists inside of your project once or twice and now let's look at how we can uh, add some values onto our list so pretend we have a list made of pikachu eevee ditto and magikarp right uh, and pretend we wanted to add another uh pokemon to it so instead of having to like uh type it out again like this we can just use the command dot append and inside of dot append we can put anything we want inside there and it'll add it to the end of the list so we're gonna be adding Moltres there, and let's print out the Pokedex before it was before Moltres is added, and then print it again after Moltres was added. So as you can see, there is the difference. Uh, in here, there is no Moltres, but then on the second list, there is uh, Moltres at the end. Now let's pretend we want to remove a list or a value. Um, let's 
of pretend we have this Pokedex, which is a list of Pikachu, Eevee, Ditto, Magikarp, and we're going to print out the list before it was changed, but then we're going to print out the list after it was removed. So we can put dot remove Ditto, so now Ditto will be gone, uh, and it'll print out the Pokedex. So it will delete Ditto, as you can see, Ditto is gone from the second list, but it's still inside of the first list. Now, uh, instead of having to uh, delete and then insert, uh, uh, how do you call it? Instead of having to delete and then reinsert a new Pokemon, we can just replace the value using the command uh, Pokedex bracket three, or basically where you want it to go, equals to your Pokemon that you want to add, or no, sorry, replace. So let me tell you in more detail. So this one right now is the Pokedex, which is the default Pikachu, Eevee, Ditto, and Magikarp. We're going to print it out one time before it was changed. Then after that, we'll print it again after Jolteon replaced index number three, which is Magikarp. So once we did that, let's look at it. So we can see here that the first index Magikarp is still there, but the second index Magikarp is gone and instead is replaced by Jolteon. Jolteon, by the way, is a uh, electric dog. Uh, it's an evolution of Eevee, uh, and I'm pretty sure to evolve it from Eevee to Jolteon in Pokemon Go, you gotta name it Sparky or Spark. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that you need to name it something like that in order to get Jolteon. And now we need to check the list values. So pretend we have a really, really long list, okay? And we want to check it. What like pretend we forgot like what we added there and we want to see if it's still there we can find it using this command so in here we have a function called check and inside of a check there is a parameter called pokemon and inside of this function what it goes is an if loop if pokemon in pokedex so pokemon by the way is this uh parameter if it's inside of this list then print the pokemon or the index is still in the list but if it's not, then just print Pokemon is not in the list or the what they entered in. So to trigger this uh, function, what we need to do is we need to type the name of the function, which is check and Moltres, uh, which is the index. So uh, Moltres is uh, not inside of the list. So let's see. So now we can see that Moltres is not in the list. However, if we were to change it to something inside of the list, like uh, Ho-Oh, pretend Ho-Oh then it is in the list ho -Oh is in the list but if it's not then it would say the pokemon is not in the list okay now let's move on to iterating lists uh which is a for loop and iterating basically means to type out each uh each item inside of the list individually so it will go pikachu then eevee then ditto then magikarp on separate uh rows so let's get started so we have a Pokedex or a list that contains Pikachu, Eevee, Ditto, Magikarp, and then we want to print uh, each of them individually. So what we want to do is we want to create a for loop, and inside the for loop we have a variable called a, and a is each of these values put together one, one by one, and for a in Pokedex, print a. So now it's going to be uh, going to type out a, which is these values. As you can see, it types out all four Pokemon, Pikachu, Eevee, Ditto, and Magikarp. So once we are done with this, let's move on to stack list structure. So we can put our list inside of a stack structure. What a stack, sorry, a stack structure is, is basically a type of list. Um, and we can pop it too. A pop will basically uh, delete the last, uh, the last item on the list. So in this case, it is Ho-Oh. And by the way, our list is Moltres, Articuno, Zapdos, and Ho-Oh, and it'll print out the Pokedex before it was popped off. And after that, we can add Pokedex.pop, parentheses at the end, and then it'll pop off the, the Ho-Oh, which is the last item in the list. So let's look at it. So we can see up here that Ho-Oh is still there in the first list, but then the second one, Ho-Oh, is gone. And we can also continue doing this uh, until we like have what we need. So now we delete it from Ho-Oh, Zapdos, we delete it to Zapdos and Ho-Oh, and we can do this one more time so we can only have Moltres now. There we go. We deleted Articuno, Zapdos, Ho-Oh, and now we're only left with Moltres. If we delete Moltres, then it'll just type, uh, it'll just print out the type of the list. Or it just prints nothing, so nothing anymore. But if we, I'm curious, why do we do one more time? It'll print the type, right? 
No, it comes up an error. Okay, okay. If we do it too much times, then it will come up an error. But we do it uh, just what we need. But um, anyways, let's just run it again so there's no error. I hate errors on my screen. Um, I can't work with an error. But here we can see that we are at the end of the list. And now we're going to look at tuples. Tuples is a cousin or a brother of the list. It is kind of the same thing, except that tuples are immutable, which means they cannot be changed. Oh, uh, basically it means they cannot add anything in there. They cannot delete anything from it. Uh, they just, you have to set it again if you want to change something. So we have a tuple here called backpack. And the way to create a tuple is similar to a list, but uh, the tuple is you need to create it with parentheses. So parentheses will equal to a tuple and bracket will equal to a list. And inside of this tuple, there is uh, strings. Um, this is our backpack, which is the name of the tuple. There's the super potion, the revive crystal, the remote battle pass, the pokeball. So it has these strings inside of our tuple. And um, let's just print out our tuple really quick or backpack. And you can see that it just prints it out normally. But pretend we want to try to add something to it. So backpack dot append gym badge. So we will uh, theoretically add a gym badge at the end of our tuple. But let's see what happens. So you can see that there is an error and it says it, uh, attribute error. Tuple has no attribute append, which means that tuple cannot support this command because it's immutable. So we cannot use this. And now let's look at deleting tuples. So you might have been like, hey, this is deleting a tuple, right? But it's different from deleting a thing from a list. Uh, when we're deleting from a list, we're deleting a single item. But if we want to delete a tuple, we can't delete a single item. Instead, we need to delete the whole tuple. And uh, let's take a look at it. So let's click delete or not delete, but let's do delete backpack. And here it is. Uh, backpack is not defined. What? Uh, what do you mean backpack is not defined? Ah, uh, yeah, never mind. I am dumb. Um, but the reason it's not defined is because we deleted it. So if we don't want to delete it, and we can just do like this, and there we go. It's still here. But if we delete it, then it will say it's not defined because it's gone. So <laughs> there's no point of being there. But yeah, so this is how to delete a uh, tuple, and we can look uh, slicing tuples now. Slicing tuples is kind of like using a list where you can have uh, just a slice of it. So we're going to do revive crystal and remote battle pass and if we want those two then we just do what we do for a list uh one two three and the same rules apply for a tuple two the limit or the end the stopping right here needs to be one above so that it prints out the things you want now it'll print out revive crystal and remote battle pass so yeah this is uh collections in python ep1 tomorrow there will be an ep2 uh stay tuned and watch it i hope you enjoyed this episode Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.